Hello. I'll be evaluating the effectiveness of the New Deal on the American economy through examination through GDP, unemployment rate, and inflation rate. Some background on the Great Depression. The Great Depression and the legislation that I will be covering the New Deal is something that completely altered the whole of the United States. I first became interested in the topic when we went in depth on it in AP US history. Discovering the true depth of the time period showed me how low a country can honestly get. Uh, to give more context on this topic, the Great Depression hit the nation in the 1929. This period of economic struggle stayed, per stayed persistent until the 1940s. This period led to complete deterioration of the nation's social, economic, and political fabric. This, this complete destruction held the nation in a chokehold of unemployment and starved civilians. The president during 1929, uh, Herbert Hoover, tried to introduce legislation to bring the nation out of the depression. This was futile because the tariffs he introduced only pushed the nation further into its hole. Eventually, the progressive left took power through Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He introduced the leftist ideas of the New Deal. New Deal was a rollout of programs that attempted to rehabilitate the economic state of the nation. The first paper describes the impact of South Korea's court decisions on the current happenings of imperialism. The author, Timothy Webster, uses examples from throughout history and addresses his argument through a great deal of historical evidence. The author uses topics like foreign judgments, the 1965 Claims Agreement, and the Statute of Limitations. Webster gives an important point of view on how imperialism is an ever-present force in the world and what effects it has on countries that were colonized. He additionally analyzes the economic effects on the country. The economic effects of the Sri Lankan article really helped to mix historical research and economic research. This was done by Lisa Morris Grovar and Shriyanthi Nalisla. The article looks at the qualitative data found from Sri Lankan's strength, and it includes things like ethnic conflicts, military buildup, and a few other important economic factors. This continued usage of qualitative data to look at the past and what leads to the future defines this research as historical, well, uh, while keeping an eye on uh, the economy. The last article examines how the change over time from women's rights plays into the economic acceptance into women's suffrage. The author's use of political citizenship from this time period in order to compare the usage and ideas of women's suffrage. All these are good bases, but they do not directly apply to the Great Depression or the New Deal. I'd like to base my research uh, mainly on the first article, um, and really hone in on the economic aspects. While these don't necessarily apply to directly to my research, it begins to show the significance of the economic of the economy within historical data. While I believe these sources are valuable, I additionally plan to redo my lit review over spring break in order to find more relevant pieces of data that um, allows me to kind of base my uh, my uh, whole research paper off. With all these pieces of research in mind, I came to the question, how did the New Deal affect the United States economy specifically by correlating growth domestic product, inflation rate, and unemployment rate? <coughs> now, for my research, I plan to evaluate the effectiveness of legislative processes presented through the New Deal. I will begin by pulling figures that tell the growth domestic product, unemployment rate, and inflation rate each year for the 16 year period I am examining. 1929 to 1945. These three figures account for the evaluation economists perform on the economy typically. Testing the correlation between each of these will allow me to see the changes from year to year within the economy and how each figure affects one another. After I correlate the three graphs, I plan to assign specific events and or introductions of programs that occurred throughout the time period. By placing these at all of these events, on the correlations, I'll be able to determine how effective the legislative processes of the New Deal were. Moving on to the results section. I began with the correlation among unemployment rate and the growth domestic product. This graph shows a clear determination that unemployment rate and growth domestic product have an extremely strong negative correlation. Throughout this time period, it is apparent due to the negative point 872 correlation. The strong correlation indicates that when unemployment lowers, 
GDP experiences a growth. This data establishes a clear answer to the questions of correlation between unemployment and growth of GDP. A relationship between growth domestic product and inflation rate is additionally present. This relationship is demonstrated by a correlation of 0 0.550. This is a weaker relationship than the one that I just showed. It continues to present uh, a moderate, strong correlation between the pair. This correlation essentially means that the two are tied together closely and they both experience similar spikes and, and uh, downfalls. This was a correlation between inflation rate and unemployment rate throughout this time period. The two are intertwined due to the fact that they have a correlation of negative 0.543. This means that the pair are negatively correlated and each does better when the other is doing worse. <coughs> this is an important relationship to highlight and it presents an interesting picture of job security at the time. Now, in addition to correlating all three of my figures, I assign actual major events that happen throughout the time period. I want to include many events to really see how not only the New Deal affected the nation, but additionally how the rest of the time period was, effective, was affected by forces outside of legislation. These include, in 1929, the major stock market crash that threw everything off, 1930, the smooth Holly tariff, 1931, the Dust Bowl, 1933, Franklin Delano Roosevelt comes into office, as well as 1933 to 1936, he begins rolling out programs for the New Deal. This includes the alphabet soup, which is the worst project administration, uh, the Civilian Conservation Corps, etc. Um, and then 1937, budget cuts forced him to stop, the, stop growing the New Deal, essentially. 1939, we experienced the end of the Dust Bowl, which was a major drought within the nation. And then 1940 to 1945, the World War II really kicked up the industrial, uh, industrial aspect of the nation. Now, moving into the discussion. Unemployment rate and GDP have an extremely strong negative correlation. These two go hand in hand in order to create the traditional cyclical economy that we have. It is evident due to this. Additionally, GDP and inflation rate had a negatively strong, had a negative, relatively strong R value. This correlation continues to show the significance of the lack of predictability amongst this time period. Inflation rate and unemployment rate continue to show the relationship found normally within an average year begin to show the struggle of maintaining the economy during this time period. Now, how this affects the New Deal, or how the New Deal affected the economy, I apologize. Now, I would like to move on to the effects of the New Deal had on the economy at the time. Evaluating the correlation between unemployment and GDP presents that both of these dates, or both of these set to rehabilitate with the rollout of the AAA, CCC, WPA, or Alphabet Soup. During, at 1933, these two both had very strong uh, stabilizations and experienced much, uh, much softer um, realities. Now, GDP and inflation rate had an R correlation of 0.550. Inflation rate at this time period varied from negative 15% to 15%. This is really big, um, and it shows massive variation during the time period, and this kind of stabilized when Franklin Delano Roosevelt came into office as well as presented uh, the New Deal to the nation. Um, yes. Now, unemployment rate and inflation, again, the R value was negative 0.543, and it similarly experienced an extreme nosedive at 1929, and then it continued to get worse and worse with Herbert Hoover in office until 1933, with, uh, with the passing of the New Deal, it began to stabilize as well as keep from dipping so dramatically at the time. Now, at, from this, we can conclude that FDR and the New Deal were effective in rehabilitating the nation into something that was more, that was ready to experience economic growth through the war. Um, these include uh, the alphabet soup, the rollout of the alphabet soup, which was a program that, which were programs that essentially provided jobs to all, to most Americans who needed them. Um, yes. 
now limitations of my uh, of my art, of my research paper. While GDP, unemployment rate, and inflation rate present the reality of the nation's economic standings, it does not go that in depth. They do not cover the whole story because there are more niche ways to evaluate the economy. Specifically, honing in on these processes was challenging due to the time constraints as well. Additionally, it is important to admit that correlation does not always mean causation or relation. Even though my data is highly correlated, there could be an off chance that it is unrelated. However, this is a risk that almost all correlational studies experience. Implications. I would like to warn and also advise future researchers on the challenges that they might encounter and how they can better interact with it. While searching for research on the Great Depression and the New Deal, it is not easy to find much research performed on the topic. I may not have been looking in the right area, but most of the content was first-hand accounts rather than actual research. Additionally, I feel that finding information on mental health at the time could be a really interesting study. I think it could show how mental health has always affected the, uh, has always affected, has always been affected by the reality of the country at the time. I additionally think it could start to destigmatize the feelings that mental health is new. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, you're at 11.20.